Thank you very much and thank you to ABARES for uh, allowing me the opportunity to address you today. Uh, agriculture, I in really enjoyed uh, both Neil's uh, presentations, such positivity around agriculture and certainly given my background and my life's work thus far, that's how I'd like to see it grow and re remain and grow. I have uh, spent the last 15 years working face to face with farming families in succession planning. So, uh, in other words, we're preparing our families and our fa farming businesses for the future. If we have a little look at this uh, slide, Charles Darwin said many years ago that it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It's the one that's the most adaptable to change, which is following right on from what Neil said at the end of, of his presentation, we will do it differently. So I'd just like to have a little look at what we're actually managing in farming businesses. And I think uh, many times we hear about the blockages associated with uh, managing generational change or succession planning, when in fact we need to think about a more holistic view of how we're actually managing businesses. In farming family businesses in the past, and certainly uh, in my family with my father and grandfathers, the focus was very much on production, I, and I even heard about that focus in the plenary session yesterday. The focus has been on production, and in the past, if we have focused on production and we've worked hard, we've largely been successful. And there hasn't been a view that we've needed to be highly educated, because it's been about that alone. It's more operational production. We've been innovative to survive, We've actually, we try to be better at marketing, although that uh, doesn't seem to have much of an exponential effect in the overall outcomes of our businesses. Largely, we've been very poor at all these other aspects of family business management. We're very poor at financial analysis, very poor at strategic planning, communication, very poor, training and development, leadership, systems, compensation, all these other areas which in the corporate world would be referred to as our soft skill areas, we've actually by our own scorecard as farmers delivered flunking grades. And so when we think about our family businesses, we're actually thinking, we're talking about the people we love the most in the world who are our families who we're managing poorly. And so in order for agriculture to improve, we need to be, and I heard this morning that we have a very small proportion of those working in agriculture who are highly educated versus the rest of the community. But when we think about it, and I work with farming families, many farming families have spent a fortune educating their children. So their children are actually quite highly educated. They're choosing not to return largely because they have been pushed out the door, encouraged to do other things, and there's been a negative view. So my life's work is really aimed at bringing those young people back into our industry. And one of the ways to do this is actually to manage the dynamics of generational change much better than we have. So what is succession planning and why is it complex? It's actually transition which ensures business continuity. So it's not about exiting agriculture, it's actually about business continuity. And we have to be very clear that that's what succession planning is truly about. And if we're going to do this well, then first of all, we need to transition management effectively. And we need to do that much younger. So Neil, N-E-I-L, the first speaker this morning, said that we're seeing an exit of some people in agriculture, and I can't remember the numbers, uh, in that younger age group. I would say that a lot of that is because we are not transitioning, we're not preparing the management transition early enough. So they hang around for a little while, they know they have career options, and they get out while they still do. And so we need to be setting about having a program for transition of this management first and foremost. And it can't be left till we're old and tired and cranky. It has to be done when we actually have the capacity to groom that next generation, transition them effectively, not just in the operational management of our businesses, but in actual management, strategic management, management of our capital and management of our business direction much earlier. We need to also be transitioning leadership 
And so we have a sense in f the farming world of the older farmers having a view that they, they are what they do. And to an extent that has been the case. I think what we need to be talking about more is addressing their needs and some of that is actually allowing them to continue to work longer while bringing in other people into the business earlier. The transition of ownership is actually the last transition. So this isn't saying that you shouldn't have a will in case something happens to you today, but it's saying we are living longer and so therefore ownership is actually not number one priority. Number one priority is actually management transition. How we then in an orderly fashion transition the ownership fits neatly beneath that in order. So where do we start? And there's so much to consider is what most farmers would say when we start a process with them. First of all, we need to be very clear as business owners what the purpose of our business is. So if we're not clear as individuals and as a collective group, as a family, then we can't be clear about what the purpose of our business is. And that's about getting everybody on the same page. And the businesses who perform better outperform others, tend to grow. Those are the businesses by definition that are very clear about their business purpose. And they hold up all of their decision making against that purpose. So they're very, very articulate and very clear. We have to think about the overlap of our business and our individual life cycle. And I said earlier, we're actually tending to leave this management transition too late. Often it's a reactive or crisis driven process rather than a proactive process early enough. So we need to, what we're seeing in our work is that the agricultural businesses performances are declining before people are undertaking transition largely. And why are they declining? They're declining because those who are managing the businesses are getting tired, they're getting older, and they're more risk averse. So we need to bring in those young heads, the youth and the enthusiasm, and that energy and passion earlier. And the combination of the two is powerful. And that's where we'll always outperform the corporates, so long as we get that combination in place early enough. We need to focus on our, our financial acumen. The financial acumen of our farmer owner operators has, in my opinion, been far too low. We haven't really understood how to analyse our businesses. We haven't really understood some of the basics of business management. And I think we need to be a better educated to actually do that. And that needs to be prioritised in terms of our management. And we're seeing certainly that the businesses that are performing better are the ones who have this higher level of financial acumen. Because we actually need to focus on our viability ongoing such that our businesses grow. If our businesses do not grow, and I don't mean they all have to be buying up land and, and further aggregating, the businesses themselves, though, must grow in order to enable the next generation to enter. That's by definition how we survive in agriculture. When we start a process of succession planning, we always need to understand the perception of each farm family member much better. And I think sometimes this is glossed over and not well understood. This transition is deeply embedded in psychology, which was why after law I studied psychology. From my own experience, I could see that we needed to understand this better, understand the psychology of it better, so that we could actually equip ourselves with the tools to effectively transition. So just basically, some of the things we hear the younger generation say on farm, they need clarity and direction about the future. They are making career decisions to return. Unlike past generations, in say my father's case, where there were six sons, five went to war and one remained, that was, that was hardly a career decision. Today it is actually a career decision. They want to be able to make some decisions and they want to be in control of their own destinies. They've got some great ideas and they'd like to try them out. 
They want to know what they can offer their partners. Again, that's having that clarity about the future. How will we support a future family? Wanting to know and understand the viability aspects. What are our parents going to do and how are they going to be funded? So we are living longer and so it's important to understand that we need to be funded for much longer, whether we're going to be funded from the business itself or whether the business is going to fund an independent retirement. If everyone's going to have a share of the farm, how are we going to pay out siblings? Too often this has been left to an estate plan. So suddenly some random date in the future, someone dies. And farmers usually die at the very worst time when we're in a raging drought or commodity prices are at their worst, they'll die. And so that random date in the future delivers an outcome which we're not prepared for. So we need to take control of this and plan our outcomes in spite of that random date that we die in the future. That's the difference between succession planning and estate planning. So that our business plan feeds into the needs of the people regardless of those random dates. Who's going to be boss when dad hands over? So we need to be clear about what it is the skill set we need, what's required from us, what the expectations are to actually manage a farm. Just because we're the first born, just because we're male, just because, just because, are not really the, the good rationale for becoming the next farm manager in the family business. And what are our roles and responsibilities? We need clarity. Again, it's a career choice. If we're going to go and work for a bank, they will tell us where we're working, what we're going to be paid, what our career path looks like, what our holidays and overtime, etc., etc., are. We come back to the family farm and none of that is clear. So our HR is what we would call it in co the corporate world, is pretty ordinary in farming families and we need to really do that better. A generation off farm, basically what they're looking at knowing is what's in it for me. And a lot of people try to, uh, they don't want to talk about this because it sounds grubby, but we actually do need to work that out. And if an opportunity is to be delivered from the farm business to other family members who are not choosing to be farmers, then best that's part of the business plan and best that's delivered over time, rather than waiting for the random date in the future where we jam a whole lot of debt back into the system at some random date. In-laws or partners of those on farm, again, they also need to know what the clarity is. They need to know what it is that other family members are going to receive. They want to know how they're going to, how, what their lifestyle is going to look like. Often these people have made a decision which has affected their careers and so they're almost reinventing themselves in rural community and until we get that NBN sorted, we're not really going to tap into the opportunity that these people represent in our farming families. And just a small story and why this is so passionate to me, years ago, it was in the early 90s, my husband and I had a dinner party and it was all young people our age at that stage at this dinner party. And uh, they were couples and all of the girls held a tertiary education and one of the boys did. All of the boys were involved in their family business and I was the only girl who was. And so what I clearly saw that night was this enormous resource in Australian agriculture, highly educated and quite articulate and also very passionate, who were actually having the door shut in their faces. Basically because the families they were marrying into were too afraid to bring them into the conversation because they've heard the war stories about how 48% of the population divorces and so half of what we've got might walk, up the, walk out the door. So rather than have the conversations about asset protection, about securing these people's interests, they were actually just shutting the door in their faces at a great cost that's not well measured in agriculture. The best agricultural businesses have got both those genders working side by side to their strengths. And what happens to me if something happens to my partner? They have often had an impact to their career, either because they can't pursue it as easily in those regional areas they've gone to live in, or because they have chosen to have a family. 
And so there does need to be security for those people and stop calling people dreaded in-laws and treating them as someone who needs to be respected and actually needs to have their needs catered for and have sensible conversations around asset protection instead of pretending that that's just not in existence. Mums in family businesses want what mums across the world want. They want harmony amongst their family. They want to be fair to all their children. And at the end of the day, probably having been the mediator and the meat and the sandwich for most of their lives, they want to do some of the things they want to do. And for dads, they're worried about getting old. They don't like having a use by date. They didn't see people in past generations necessarily live to be old, so they're having to model that themselves going forward. They actually want to be able to know also that this business that they have put their life's work into and potentially generations before them has got the legs beneath it and can continue into the future. So we need to develop communication strategies to support this. We need to have an exit strategy for our retiring people, whether they're still going to work on the farms, support those who are on the farms or not, it still needs to be defined. And when retirement is not addressed, it is the greatest blockage to the entry of the next generation. And so we need to put more effort into that and prioritise that in our business plan so that we're delivering into those needs before we're educating the next generation, before we may be taking the next expansion horizon. We can't do everything at once. We need to be clear about our roles and responsibilities. And these are just some examples of organisational charts that I see that look like dog's breakfasts. And I'm not telling people that they need to be corporates, but they actually do need to have you know, be on the same page, have a clear structure, and everybody understand that well with high levels of accountability. We also need to have policies in our business, and this is where some of the better educated and some of the next generation can actually introduce some of these tools, which are not complicated, but make an enormous difference to how we manage our people, which are our families, and in turn have these family businesses prevail for many more generations. And just lastly, this is a great saying by Warren Buffett, someone sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago. Thank you. Thank you.